In 1912, Owen Byrd, sports editor of the Los Angeles Times, wrote that the University of Southern California varsity had the splendid fighting spirit of Trojans. Well, the term stuck, quickly replacing such earlier and rather pale nicknames as Methodists and Wesleyans. The alumni have built a statue of the Trojan warrior at the center of the campus with these adjectives of virtue inscribed in the pedestal, faithful, scholarly, skillful, courageous, ambitious. What a stroke of luck that Mr. Bird back there in 1912 didn't say they were as strong as mules or, for instance, plucky as roosters. What in the world could you chisel under the likenesses of one of these creatures? In their spare time, the varsity players gather just across the path from this statue of the Trojan, this faithful, scholarly, skillful, courageous, ambitious Trojan. As a teacher at USC for 31 years, I came to know many of these football men during the decades of growth at our university. Some of them were enrolled in my classes, and as time went on, I noticed significant changes. As football itself evolved into a more and more complicated game, it was obvious that brains, mental agility, and split-second reflexes were quite as important as physical brawn and mass and raw courage. When I first saw football as a boy, long before World War I, it had about as much subtlety and finesse as a tug of war or a battering ram in action. But by the 1930s, it increasingly became a complicated sort of chess with a set of intricate patterns like choreography or, or the score of a symphonic movement. And my regard and respect for the football man I came to know in one way or another increased progressively through the years. I might have suspected something new in the air when in the early 1930s, a massive, almost cubical halfback came into my office, shut the door carefully, and with beads of sweat on his forehead, produced a crumpled wad of paper from the fold of his thick red sweater. Read these, Doc, he whispered, and tell me if they're any good. They were verses, and very bad verses, but he had written them. Now, had this item of news reached the public then, he would have lost face as an athlete, been sent to Coventry by his teammates, and abandoned all hope of ever being named All-American by anybody. But today, I suspect he would have had a much better chance. And perhaps, oh, perhaps, the verses might have been a little better. I wish that I had a full side of this record to call the roll of remembered names, but of course, I have not. Here are only a few. Personable Marsh Duffield years ago, who just missed being named a Rhodes Scholar for his year, missed it by only a fraction of a millimeter. An Orv Moeller, destined to die so soon in a tragic airplane crash. And Cotton Warburton, as nimble as a rabbit and as clever as a fox. And Glenn Galvin, who used to talk so interestingly about the books he read. He seemed always to have a book under his arm. And Johnny Baker, whose miraculous great toe should be eventually displayed in the Smithsonian Museum in Washington. Aaron Rosenberg, Ernie Smith, and the fabulous Frank Gifford. I could go on and on and on, ladies and gentlemen. And I remember some who went away to war to play another sort of game like Trojans and who did not come back. But our business here is with the Trojan football season of 1964, the most colorful and dramatic in our university's history. Seven victories and three defeats. Certainly not a superior record on the surface. What gives it quality and what makes it worth talking about, thinking about, is found in those defects. Mind you, we can't rejoice in defeat, but in this instant, Defeat sets off certain of the high and unexpected victories as yet more surprising, stirring, and gratifying. The first game, Colorado, played in the Coliseum September 18th and a pleasant enough way to start the season. But let's hear it from Tom Kelly. Garrett finds the hole and touchdown, USC. Birdie takes the snap, turns, hands off. Garrett hits straight ahead, still on his feet, going at the 15, the 10, the pop, touchdown. Birdie flips it out to Garrett. Ben 
comes into the end zone. Touchdown, USC. SC 21, Colorado, nothing. And next, Oklahoma ranked second in the nation. The Sooners are overwhelming favorites, but somehow the Trojans don't believe that. And here we are, September 26th, in Norman, Oklahoma. USC has the ball on the Oklahoma three. Up over the ball at center, Paul Johnson. Fertig has the Sherman wide, Moulton wide right. The snap, the give to Garrett. Fertig keeps it, rolls in, touchdown USC. Ball is on the one, second down and goal. 47 seconds remaining in the first period. Trojans would love to get this one in. Sherman is the slot back. Fertig takes the snap, keeps the ball, gives to, he keeps it, he's in. Fertig kept and scored, another rollout. The Trojans up to the line of scrimmage very quickly. Fertig barking signal, 27 seconds. Fertig to Heller, he dives. He is in, I believe, yes. Heller scores. And it'll be a kicking situation for the Trojans. Ty Solness in, John Thomas out on defense. Trojans out of the huddle and up over the ball at the line of scrimmage. And Fertig is back on the SC 36-yard line. He'll have the wind at his back. Three men deep for the Sooners as Fertig gets the kick away. It is a high floating kick. Coming down, Rensel drops it. It's into the end zone. Rensel going for it, a dive for it. The Trojans may have it. Big scramble, we'll see who's got the ball. A huge pile up. Looks like it's a touchdown, USC it is. Hear the hush after every Trojan touchdown. Those Oklahomans are too stunned even to groan very much. Fourth down, 13 yards for Oklahoma. McCurdy's back to kick into the wind. And we have Renison and Sherman, the twin safeties for the Trojans. The snap from center. There is the kick. A good spiral into the wind. Fine kick. Renison on the 34. That's the 40. Cuts back. Boom, through three guys. He's at the 40. The 30. He's still on his feet at the 20. He's at the 15. He's over for a touchdown. Billy Renison has gone 64 yards for a touchdown. Trojans took over this ball on a recovered fumble by a Rubio on the Oklahoma 34. And they have driven down now to the five and a half yard line. Up over the ball at center is Paul Johnson. Cahill is the flanker right. Fertig takes the snap, fakes, rolls out, fires a pass. It's complete to Fred Hill in the end zone. Touchdown, USC. The score, Trojans 40, Sooners 14. Euphoria for a week. And then October 3rd at East Lansing, SC's first loss to Michigan State, 17 to seven. Let's dispose of those other losses. October 17th, the Ohio State Buckeyes, 17, USC, nothing. And October 31st, Washington goes home, 14 to 13. The Trojans take on Texas A&M, October 10th. Tom Kelly has the highlights. Third down for the Trojans and four yards to go for a first down, eight yards to go for a touchdown. Aggies have got too many men on the field. Now they clear that. The give once again. This time it's the Fertig on the keep and he's in for the touchdown. Fourth and goal from the five. Here's the field goal attempt. The kick is up long enough. Is it straight? It is. And on the Aggie five, first and goal. Fertig takes the snap, it's to Garrett, and Garrett is in. They never laid a hand on him. Fertig brings him to the line of scrimmage. They give to Garrett, he hurdles in for the touchdown. Listen to this crowd. Second down and goal. Winslow takes the snap, hands off to Heller. Heller is in for the touchdown. SC 31 and the Aggies 7. Venerable Stanford is never a pushover. The Trojans meet them November 7th at Palo Alto, and the Indians score first with a field goal in the first quarter. But the Trojans pay their respects late in the first quarter and again in the second. Ball is on the Indian 23-yard line, second down and seven. Trojans have it. They trail 3-0. Ferdig is back. 
10 seconds to go. Pass complete to Hill on the 15. He's at the 10. He's out of bounds on the Indians' seven-yard line. First down and goal, Trojans. First and goal. Gives to Garrett. Coming wide. Can he make it? At the five, the three. He is in for a touchdown. Second down, a yard to go for the touchdown. Ferdig hands to Garrett. He's got a hole, and he's in for the TD. Mike Garrett has scored. In the first play of the fourth quarter, the Indians pull in a touchdown. And the score is SC 12, Stanford 10. Not by any means a comfortable margin for interested Trojans. But hear this. 12 to 10, the Trojans lead by two, and it looks as though we've got another cliffhanger here at Palo Alto. Dave Lewis is back in at quarterback for Stanford. From the Stanford 7 in the I formation. Lewis hands off. Oh, Hadley fumbles. Recovered by USC on the pass. And then... Snap to Ferdig. Fakes the handoff. He's back. Being rushed. Being rushed. He's thrown back on yard line. In there very quickly, Pettigrew and Hibbler. So unable to score a touchdown, the Trojans have now sent Rich Brownell into the ball game with the ball on the Indian 16 yard line. Brownell will attempt a field goal from the 23 and Winslow will hold. Let's watch this one. The snap, it's down, the kick, it's in the air. It's long enough. It's good. Another happy ending. SC 15, Stanford 10. November 21st, the Trojans take on their Westwood neighbors, the UCLA Bruins. For the Bruins, 13 seniors will mark this as their last game against USC, and they'd like nothing more than to come out on top at least once during their college careers. And they hold high hopes for a happy homecoming, those Bruins. We're in the first quarter. Listen. Fertig takes the snap, rolls back, fires a pass incomplete. Intended for Garrett, threw it right at his right knee. Fourth down and five. Both Moten and Sherman are flanked to the right. Ferdig is back to pass. He throws. It is complete for Moten on the 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, USC. And in the second quarter... Williams, Sherman, Garrett, and Fertig in the backfield now as Moulton is flanked wide to the right. Bruins are in a 6-2. There's the pitch by Fertig. Back to Sherman. Finds a hole. He's inside the 30. He's at the 20. He's at the 10. He will score for USC. Four minutes and 33 seconds in the third quarter, life begins to brighten for Brother Bruin. Old Trojan bench is up now, standing on the sidelines, as is the Bruin bench, as the Bruins come out of the huddle up to the line of scrimmage. Altenberg is wide right, slot man is Hafner, Zeno's back to pass, he's looking, no rush, now being rushed, now he throws, it is complete to Altenberg in the end zone for a touchdown. Trojans 14, Bruins 7. But in truth, it's a dark day for UCLA. Third and 12 on the Bruin 49, a big play for USC. Ferdig, against a five-man line, is rolling left. He's going to throw. He is almost stopped. Now he's going to throw. He fires. It's complete to Sherman. He's on his feet. He's still going at the 20, the 10. He'll score for USC. <laughs> And the day grows darker for the Bruins. There's the snap. Ferdig hands off and Heller goes in to score. And darker. 
The snap to Ferdig. He fakes to Garrett. Ferdig rolling out. May throw. He does. It's complete. Touchdown. Dave Moulton in the end zone. Yes, a dark day for UCLA, but in this darkness, the Bruins are still alive and groping. Now Sindel would like to get his name in the book with a touchdown. He's back to pass from the five. He's looking. He's being rushed. He's being rushed way back, being chased, gets away, gets a block, throws, and it is complete in the end zone to Altenberg. Touchdown, UCLA. The final score, Trojans 34, Bruins 13. I'd call this game a real crowd pleaser. Well, to about half the crowd. Now back to the 24th of October and an encounter with Cantankerous Cal. At halftime, SC7, Cal 6. But in the fourth quarter, Cal 21, SC 14. And then... Second and 25 on their own 45, and they've still got 55 yards to go. Fertig throws, complete, and down on the Cal 45. Tommy Lutz knocking down Fred Hill. Clock is running with five minutes to play in this ball game. California leads 21 to 14. Fertig back, rolling, looks, throws. He's got Garrett alone at the 10. It's a touchdown, USC. in seven plays. Ferdig throwing a 34-yard pass to Mike Garrett. And now the score 21 to 20. They are going to go to win it, not to tie it. 4.35 remaining. Ferdig asks for quiet. The snap. He rolls out. He looks. He throws. It's batted in the air. It's no good. Two minutes left now, ladies and gentlemen. Hang on to your hats. First and ten. Fertig sends Garrett in motion. He's back to pass. He's rushed. He's hit. He's being hit again and down on the four-yard line. Now it's on the four. They're 96 yards away now. Fertig throws incomplete. Batted down by Durza and Beasley. Fertig is on his own five-yard line. Garrett's in motion. Fertig is back to pass. He throws. Garrett has it. He is hit and dropped on the 24. Short of the first down. And the Trojans, with a fourth down situation, won't kick it. They can't win the game by kicking it. They're going to try and go for it. Minute 55 remaining. Fertig is back to pass. Everybody's looking. He throws. It's complete to Hill. The 35. He's at the 40. Anderson made the stop. But time continues to run. A minute 45. A minute 40. Ball is on the Trojan 41. First and 10. Minute 35. Trojans are trailing 21-20. Fertig throws. Complete to Cahill, he's out of bounds on the 44 to stop the clock with a minute 30 remaining. And the Trojans about 56 yards from the goal line. Fertig has had a brilliant ball game, 17. Passes completed, he's back to throw again. He's got Garrett on the 45, the 40. He's on his feet at the 35, the 30, the 25, the 20 yard line. A minute 15 seconds to play. Garrett is down to the Cal 21, and the clock is moving. Trojans hurry to line up. Fertig passing to Garrett. One minute to go. Fertig throws. Fred Hill goes out of bounds to stop the clock on the Cal 21. I can't recall a more exciting college football game. 
Well, I can. Wisconsin and SC 42-37. But I had to go back two years. First, second down and 11 for the Trojans on the Cal 21. Fertig is back to pass. He's looking. He throws. It's down. It's caught. It is a touchdown. Bob Sherman has caught it. gentlemen the unbelievable has happened the Trojans have driven 82 yards in two minutes and they have scored on a 21 yard pass from Fertig to Sherman and now have gone ahead 26 to 21 with 55 seconds remaining in this ball game the Trojans 26 the Bears 21 and if you think that was great excitement Hear the other half of this record. November 28th at the Coliseum, Notre Dame, one of SC's best friends among the other great universities of America, except, except on the football field. Today, these tough old rivals are meeting for the 36th time. For this afternoon, the University of Southern California meets the nation's number one football team, the unbeaten, untied Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. For the most rabid of Trojan fans, today's game has got to be described as an uphill battle. The Irish have strong credentials for their lofty perch atop the college rating systems, and the Trojans will have to be at their very best to contend with them here this afternoon. Notre Dame has won the toss and will receive. USC will kick off and defend the goal to my right, the peristyle end of the Coliseum, or as we look at it, the east end of the Coliseum field. Rassus and Eddie are the two deep men. Wolski and Cantor are on the 20. There's the kick by Gears, and it's coming down to Rassus on the three. At the five, up the middle to the 10, 15, 20, 25. Breaks in the open for a moment and is dropped on the 30-yard line. So this ball game is underway. Nick Rassus carries it 27 yards to the Irish 30, and it'll be first and 10 at that point. The Irish come to the line of scrimmage. Jack Snow is flanked wide right. Hewitt, the quarterback. Marking signals, takes the snap, hands off, and carrying is Eddie. I'll make that Wolski, and he's got about four or five yards to the 34. Tackle made by Gary Hill. Snow again is flanked, this time wide left. Slot back on the right side is Eddie. Snap to Hewitt, hands off. Coming wide on this side is Wolski. Cuts back in over the 35 to about the 38. There he's tackled by Ballone and Blacksmith. Jeff Smith also went on the stop, and Lockwood also coming up to help out. As uh, Wolski has carried twice now and has picked up eight yards, and it's going to be third down and call it a yard and a half to go. Notre Dame on their own, 38, just nosed over. Snow is flanked wide to the left. Hewitt, the quarterback. Takes the snap, turns and hands off, and getting hit right back of the line of scrimmage is Cantor, the fullback. In very quickly was Lockwood, Mike Gears. And Marv Bain, all there to make the stop for the Trojans, and that brings up a roar of approval from the Trojan rooting section across the way. And you can hear that roar continue and grow as Hewitt comes out, and Notre Dame apparently will go into a fourth down punt situation. Garrett goes into solo safety. Snow is standing back on the Irish 25. Garrett back in safety on the Trojan 20. Snow back to kick. There's the snap and the boot. It's a fine kick. Wobbly coming down, bouncing on the 26, away from Garrett on the 20, the 10. He's watching it, picks it up, steps out of bounds on the 11-yard line. Well, the Trojans have held the Irish in their first series, but can they hold on to the ball? Fertig pitching back to Sherman. Cuts the corner, cuts back in, fumble. Looks like Notre Dame has recovered. No, they can't hold on to the ball. Notre Dame has indeed recovered and... Ball will be marked on the 15. Line is set. The ball is snapped. It's down. The kick is in the air, and it's good. Notre Dame 3, SC nothing. And? Ball is marked on the Trojan. 21 and a half yard line. Hubert takes the snap, keeps it. He's back to pass. He's looking. He throws, and it's complete. The snow in the end zone for a touchdown. Notre Dame 10, SC nothing, and? First and goal for Notre Dame on the SC five yard line. Hewitt barking signals. 
Takes the snap, goes to his right on the option, pitches back. Wolski is going in all alone. Touchdown, Notre Dame. Notre Dame 17, SC nothing. At halftime, about everybody concedes an overwhelming victory to the Irish. Everybody except Trojan coach John McKay and his players. SC in the first half has moved the ball well and three times has approached the Notre Dame goal line. Mr. McKay tells his men that if in the first series they can march to a touchdown, they'll go on to win the game. And in the locker room of undefeated, untied Notre Dame, Coach Ara Persegian writes on a blackboard just 30 more minutes. Yes, in 30 football minutes, the 1964 season would be through. The Trojans trail 17-0 here at the half. They are on the field and ready to receive as Ken Ivan will tee the ball up on the Notre Dame 40. And the Trojans will be marching from out of the shadows at the tunnel end of the Coliseum to my left, the west end, marching upfield into the sunshine. And uh, now Ivan from the 35 will try to get the second half underway. There's his kick. It's short and scribbling off the side, and it will go uh, to Sherman on the 12. He thought it might go out of bounds. Comes back toward the middle of the field, gets a block, swings to the far side, gets away from one man and another, fumbles the ball on the ground, scramble for it. USC recovers. All right, Trojans have it first and 10 on their own 32. Ferdig takes the snap, he's back to pass. Quick one on the side to Garrett, gets a block. At the 35, the 40, 45, 47 yard line. Garrett brought down by McGlissick and Rassus, the Notre Dame safety man. 15 yard pass and run to Garrett. Series started on the Trojan 32. Snap to Ferdig, he wants to flip, he does. Out incomplete and going out of bounds. Notre Dame leads, two touchdowns and a field goal in the first half have given the Irish their margin. Ferdig with the snap, he's back, he's rolling out to his left, he may run. He's at the 45, the 50, the 45, the 40, he's hit, he's out of bounds on the Notre Dame 34 yard line. Rassus drove him out. Sherman out, Heller in. Heller, Williams, Garrett and Ferdig in the backfield. Fred Hill is flanked wide to the right. Ferdig hands off to Heller, finds a hole at the 30, stumbles and goes out of bounds with a dive on the Irish 28. Second down for USC, three yards to go. Hill is flanked wide to the right. Snap to Ferdig. Ferdig hands off to Heller once again. He's met right at the line of scrimmage and piled up this time. It's going to be third down and five for the Trojans. Heller lost a yard on that attempt. The ball on the Notre Dame 29. And do these Irish get difficult when you get inside their 30? So it's on the Notre Dame 29. Moulton wide to the right. Ferdig hands off to Garrett. He's coming wide. He's at the 30. He's at the 25. He's at the 20. He's at the 18. McGlessick and Gemitter made the stop. Swias and Williams and Moulton on the blocks. 11 more yards for Garrett. 12 and a half minutes to play in the third period. 17 to nothing, Notre Dame leads. Ferdig with the snap, gives to Garrett. He's going wide again, gets a vicious block. He's at the 15, he's down to the 13. Moulton threw a block to end all blocks. Talaga made the stop for Notre Dame and a flag is down across the way and we have a personal foul call against Notre Dame. was really creamed by Dave Moten and Regner didn't like it and he tried to take a poke at Moten is what happened and the penalty makes it first and goal USC on the Notre Dame six yard line can the Trojans put it in now Ferdick takes the snap gives to Heller he is at the five and no further second and goal on the Notre Dame five Trojans have driven downfield this is the fourth time they've been in Touchdown territory. Can they make it? Handoff is to Garrett. He booms to about the one-yard line. Kostelnik and Rassus make the stop. Bill Fisk led the charge. Trojans huddling back on the 10. Finally out of the huddle. Johnson up over the ball at center. Moten wide to the right. On the Notre Dame one-yard line, and the Irish have got a seven-man line. There's the give to Garrett. He scores. for the University of Southern California to get the Trojans on the scoreboard. 
68 yards they drove in 10 plays. Winslow is in and will hold and Brownell will attempt the extra point. Snap, it's down, the kick is in the air and it is good. And with timeout in the field and with 11 minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the third period, the score is Notre Dame 17, USC 7. Some success at last for old SC. Now the Irish are on a rampage. And again, the Irish come up with the big play when they need it. And now it's first and goal on the USC nine-yard line. Hewitt barking signals. 17-7, the Irish lead. Hewitt on the option, keeps, now pitches back. It's loose. It's fumbled. It's recovered by USC. Listen to this crowd. John Heward running the option, pitched back to Wolski. He couldn't handle it, and John Lockwood fell on it and recovered it for USC, and the Trojans stave off what appeared to be another Irish touchdown. And SC has taken over, first and 10 on their own 14-yard line. I'll tell you something about Tom Kelly. If he has prejudices, you'd never catch it. When penalties are called, for instance, no matter how odd they may seem, Kelly holds himself in check. Listen to this. Ferdig is going to pass. He's looking. The rush is on. He throws, and it is incomplete. And no pass interference. Ladies and gentlemen, a flag is down, however. But Rod Sherman was held up at the line right in front of the Notre Dame bench. And they're calling pass interference on USC. Rod Sherman was actually held by both hands right in front of the Notre Dame bench by Nick Rassus in front of an official and not a flag and instead we have a call of pass interference offensively against the Trojans. Well, the Irish are at it again and they're moving. Second down, less than a yard. Irish with the ball, Hewitt hands off and Cantor scores. Flag is down on the field, holding penalty against Notre Dame. And a 15-yard walk-off against the Irish. Well, that's the luck of the Irish. Now in the fourth quarter, the Trojans are skillful, courageous, and ambitious. SC takes over, first and 10 on its own 12. Garrett going wide, gives ground, and is tripped up. Back on the eight-yard line as McGlissick came rolling through and fought off a good block by Moten. Here's Ferdick. He's back to pass. On the goal line, throws up the middle of the hill. He's all alone at the 30. He's being chased. 35 and down in the 36. Here's Brownwood in, Fred Hill out. Rassus made the stop for Notre Dame. Sherman is flanked to the sidelines left. Ferdick takes the handoff, takes it to Garrett, being rushed. Now he throws incomplete. Eight minutes and 40 seconds remain in the ball game. 17-7 Notre Dame. Ferdig rolling right, fires up the middle. Beautiful catch by Sherman down on the 49. Bassus made the stop and Sherman made a great grab. It's first and 10 USC, 13 yards. Moten is flanked to the sidelines. The give to Garrett, there's a hole, finds a bit of an opening. He's got five, six, seven yards. He's down to the Irish 42. Tackle made by Regner and Carroll for Notre Dame. Time remaining in this ball game, seven minutes, 45 seconds. Irish lead 17 to seven. The Trojans are trying to fight back. Whoops, hand off to Williams. He dives inside the 40 to the 39. And Williams has a first and 10 USC on the Irish 39. Tackle by Bassus. But time is of the essence. Seven minutes and 20 seconds remaining in this ball game and the Trojans are down by 10. Moten flanked wide left, Ferdig is back, he's being rushed, he wants to throw, he throws, it's complete to Garrett, and he's dropped right on the 40. A loss of a yard. Fred Hill is wide left, Sherman is slotted to the left. Ferdig barking signal, takes the snap, he's going to pass, good protection, fires, it's complete to Hill on the Notre Dame 26-yard line. Carey makes the tackle, first down, USC. The Trojans are fighting like Trojans. 13-yard aerial completion. First down on the Irish 27. Ferdig to Garrett. Finds a hole and goes for about three. To about the 23, maybe the 24. As he was tackled by McGlissick. Three-yard gain for Garrett. Second and seven on the Notre Dame 23. Moten is out. Hill is in. 
Sherman flanked wide left, 17-7. Notre Dame leads. Fertig is going to pass in the end zone. He's got Fred Hill. Touchdown, USC. No conversion. The score, Notre Dame 17, SC 13. The Trojans are in this game to stay, and they must stay the Irish. The ball is on the Notre Dame 34, third down and a long four, maybe five yards to go. The give to Eddie, the sweep, the rush is on. USC has stopped them on the 33. It'll be fourth down for the Irish. Stay them they have and the Irish will kick. The snap to Snow, he gets it away. It's an end over end to Garrett at the 46. He dodges, comes back, turns, starts the other way, tries to cut back, he's at the 50, on his feet. He's down to the 42, fumbles. I don't know, the Trojans have recovered on the Notre Dame 38. Two minutes and 10 seconds, and SC is taking time out as Notre Dame's Offensive unit and reserves are standing on the sidelines imploring their defensive team to preserve their unbeaten mark. And across the way, the Trojans and a partisan 83,000 fans here imploring this Trojan team to fight back and get the win. First down, 10, USC in the Notre Dame 40. Clock has two minutes and 10 seconds remaining. Furtick hands off to Garrett. No hold. He stopped at the 40 and dumped. And the Trojans are taking another timeout. They'll have one more left after this one. Time out on the field and with two minutes and five seconds remaining in the game, the score is Notre Dame 17, USC 13. Second down and 10 yards to go on the Notre Dame 40 yard line. Fertig is back to pass, good protection. He's looking, he throws and it's complete. On the 20 yard line and down to the Notre Dame 17, Fred Hill. Down on the Notre Dame 17, Carroll and Rosses make the stop and USC has taken time out. We've got one minute and 55 seconds remaining to be played in the fourth quarter. On the 17, first down, USC, minute 50 to go. In motion is Garrett, pitch to Garrett at the 20. He's going to be hit and he's driven out of bounds on the 15, a gain of two yards. It'll be second down and eight on the Irish 15 yard line. It's a dramatic and certainly an emotion-packed final minute and 45 seconds of football here this afternoon. Here's Ferdig to pass. He's looking in the end zone. He throws. It is incomplete. Fred Hill caught it but went out of bounds with it in the end zone. Incomplete. Third down on the Irish 15-yard line. The Heller is in. And here come the Trojans. Wide to the left is Hill. Fertig on the Notre Dame 15, takes the snap, he's back to pass, he's being rushed, he's caught, he bobbles it, it's on the ground, rolling around, who's got it? It has ruled an incomplete pass, and the clock stops with a minute 35, fourth and eight, Fertig with the snap, he's rolling, he throws, complete to Sherman, a touchdown for USC! comeback this has been the snap brownell tries the extra point it's up it's good there's a minute 35 remaining unofficially on the scoreboard clock and notre dame finds themselves trailing 20 to 17 to a band of usc trojans that refuse to quit and now gears to kick off to notre dame he boots it it is end over end. It is down to Eddie on the 10. He's at the 15. He's going to the sidelines and out of bounds on the 23. Nick Eddie runs that ball out on the Irish 23. And now stand by for aerials with a minute 30 to go. Hewitt is back to pass. He's looking. He's being rushed. He throws and it's complete to Eddie out of bounds on the Irish 38. Clock shows a minute 15 remaining. Snow goes wide to the left. Trojans lead 20 to 17. Flanked even wider left is Eddie. Hewitt back to pass. The rush is on. Good protection. He throws and it's intercepted. No. Gary Hill had it right in his hands and dropped.
dropped it. Would have gone all the way, but dropped it. And we still have a minute and 10 seconds unofficially. On their own 38-yard line, Notre Dame second down. Hewitt barking signals the snap. He's back. The rush is on. He's got protection. He throws. It is complete. And we've got a flag on the field, and I think... Oh, interference by USC. Minute five seconds unofficially. First down for the Irish on their own 46. Hewitt. Back to pass. He hasn't been thrown back there all day. There's the rush. The throw incomplete. And another flag. Defensive holding should be five yards. Uh, now they're stepping 15. Putting the ball on the Trojan 43-yard line and making it first down Notre Dame. Well, a moment ago, Gary Hill had the ball in his arms and couldn't hang on to it. Would have nullified all this nonsense. <laughs> We've got exactly a minute unofficially. Hewitt back to pass, getting the rush, getting the protection. Now he throws long, and it is intercepted by Shaw. He is on the 30, 35, the 40. He's hit. He's out of bounds on the Trojan 45. And that may pretty well wrap it up. Wrap it up? Nonsense. With 15 seconds to go, the Irish force the Trojans to punt. And 15 seconds is time enough for Notre Dame with its incredible passing attack to move ahead. It's a spell of delicious agony for SC fans. Hewitt is back to pass. Clock is running. Hewitt throws upfield and it's complete and out of bounds on the 41-yard line to Jack Snow. Hewitt takes the snap. He's back to pass. He's looking. He throws. It's complete to Snow. Out of bounds. Four seconds to play in the ball game. On the Trojan 47. Hewitt takes the snap. He's back to pass. Good protection. He's looking. Now he's rushed. He throws a wobbler downfield, and it is incomplete. Broken up. The ball game is over. And USC has won it 20 to 17. gentlemen you can't believe the pandemonium here on the field of the Coliseum as the entire USC ball club is just swarmed over by literally thousands of fans who are out of the stadium seats and on the field of the Coliseum congratulating a team for a tremendous comeback and some 38 to 40 weary Notre Dame fighting Irish slowly make their way to the dressing room with their first loss of the 1964 season. And so the 1964 season ended. The Coliseum is empty now, the goalposts are down, and the groundsmen smooth out the green turf for other sorts of games and other spectacles. But Trojan students, alumni, and all the friends of Troy who saw that Notre Dame game will never forget it. It brought the 1964 season to a triumphant end, and... It promised great things for the 1965 season yet to come.